Hey, in today's video, we are going to show you how to change out a universal joint on a PTO drive line for your tractor. So what we have done is that the, the PTO shaft that come with this, this stump grinder was very light duty. I just don't think it's heavy enough. And it apparently I'm correct because even with the slip clutch, it twisted the PTO shaft. So we've got a much heavier duty shaft. However, it has the wrong end on it. So we're gonna swap those out today. And this will in turn will show you how to swap out a uh, universal joint and even like a truck drive line, or in this case, the PTO drive line of, the, of this stump grinder. All right, so this is my plan for today. Probably hard to tell in the video, but this drive shaft is just, you can see the twist in it right here. It's the straight line it is no longer straight. It's got a nice curve to it. And that's just where, this is a very thin shaft. I was not, not impressed with it at all. So anyway, I ordered a heavy duty uh, shaft. This is actually for a bush hog. And I knew that, but it's got a, it's really thick. It's a real heavy duty sh uh, shaft. But it did come with this particular type of end on it. And this one has the splines and this one does not. So what I'm gonna do is just swap out the ends. And in turn, that's gonna show you guys how to swap out a universal joint if you've never done it. And this is gonna, I'm gonna be doing this as if you were doing it in the field, uh, with not all the, you know, the perfect tools. We used to have to do this in the army and that's how I learned how to do this this way. So let me show you what, what how to do it. All right, so here is a, uh, Got some clip ring pliers and uh, got innies, outies. Um, they work both ways. And then again, this one, you can turn these around. This one has a little deal where you can turn it around um, and, and make it an open or a closed by just turning the, the pins around. I don't know where I picked these up at over the years. I've had these for a long time. However, I picked these up at AutoZone the other day. And these are the coolest thing ever. And you don't necessarily have to have these. You could actually, with a pair of needle nose and some patience and a couple screwdrivers, you can actually get these clip rings out. But having this tool is a really nice thing to have. And what I like about it is that you don't have to have both the inner and outer. So you got it right now, it's on the, the outer and you flip it, the switch over to the inner and you move it. And there it goes, becomes the inners. So they need to pull that way. That's really nice. The only thing you have, you have some Allen screws here so that you can change out these from straights to angles if you need angles. But 90% of the time, this will be this will work. What we're gonna do is take off the universal joint from this part. This is the part of the shaft that we don't we need. We don't need the part for uh, this. This is obviously no good. You could save this universal joint if you really, really wanted to, but in this case, I just don't see that it's necessary. So here we go. So we need the need the outers. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your clip rings out from both sides. You gonna be a better. Back in the day, I could see really good. Uh oh, we almost got it. There it goes. That was not good. Yeah, well, we don't need them anyway. I'll try to keep the other one. I, it, we'd probably spend all day trying to find that. It went down that way. It went that way. And that's gonna happen. I've had it happen in the field and end up having to open brand new universal joints up just to get the clip rings out. This is tough because the paint is still uh, on. So what we got here is the paint holding that one in. They really put the paint to it, so I'll just work it around. There we go, the paint out. Probably could have took a knife and scraped it out. All right, now we have both of those out. One's off in the ditch somewhere, and uh, we'll get to the next part. All right, for this to work, and you're in the field, pretend you're in the field. We kind of are in the field. I do have access to some tools, but 
you can actually do this job with screwdriver, a uh, couple sockets and a, something, a hammer to beat with. So what you need is a, if you're in the shop, you're gonna use a press just to press this out. Well, we don't have a press, so what you can do is just make sure that the socket that you put under here has enough room for this to come through and fall into. There's needle bearings in here and you wanna make sure that you uh, keep those needle bearings clean and you don't let them get out because they will fall out and then you are really in a bad way. You're in a pickle then. All right, so what we need next is a three quarter socket just to set in here. Oh, so that's a little more level. Take a three quarter inch socket. This is not ideal and I'm gonna get a thousand people saying this, you don't need to do this. If you're on the side of the road and you need to change a PTO shaft out on your truck, and this is the difference between you being able to do it today uh, and, and having it towed in, and maybe not even having access to a tow truck, there's a lot of situations where this is all you have. You, you have to be self-reliant. And I can always go buy another three quarter inch socket. As a matter of fact, this is a little cheap three quarter inch socket. So if I damage this, it's okay. Right, I'm starting to come through now. You don't have to hit very hard, if you can tell. I'm not really hitting that hard now. Paint, all that stuff's in the way. In the shop, you can do this really easy with a, uh, you just gotta press. Oh my, oh my goodness. Caught all that on film. I don't really care about this one because this is old and it, it fell on its butt so it's not dirty. But there's little needle bearings in there and they're all intact. So here's the next part, the harder part. You still can't get this off because this side is still on over here. So now we have to do is turn around and beat it back through the other way and knock the cap out. And these are, if you did drop this, and I have dropped these, you will have to take and you know, get dirt, mud, everything. You have to take all these little needle bearings out Clean them all up, put new grease in them, uh, or your your joint will go bad really fast. So, if you do this enough, as much as I've done in deserts and all around the world, uh, you will drop this and you will have to clean this up. So, it's just part of it. Try to do the best you can. So now, this one again would be better, much better if you had a brass drift. Because the brass drift would cause it to uh, not mar the metal. Uh, you can easily mar the metal. This is hardened steel, and or so we're beating hardened steel against hardened steel. Actually, hardened steel against chrome steel. So, but we've already moved it now, so it should just go right through. There it went. Keep it closer on the back so you won't drop that either. Yeah. Well, this one just popped out. I didn't get it all the way through. I could go ahead and pop it through. If you had a, like a drift, you could knock it through. But, so, I guess I needed to break it, break it out. Let's see if I've got anything to knock this through with. Oh, it just fell through. It was out. So I've got both of my caps out. Now this is the actual piece that I need to go on the tracher. Let's go clean that up. It fell down in the mud. It's rained for like two weeks straight here. A little brake cleaner here. If not, you just have to I clean these things up with everything from from gasoline, diesel, whatever you have. T-shirts off your back. I'm just cleaning the spines out here, so I'm gonna put a good coat of grease on all this. I am so gonna go ahead and clean these machine surfaces out here because this is the part we're gonna need. We don't want to throw these away because there are sometimes the actual universal joint right here, this portion, generally are the same across most universal joints in this size. You know, there's obviously bigger universal joints that have bigger uh, bearing surfaces. But th this is, if this cap here is a hair bigger, a lot of times in these sizes they will swap out, that's what I'm trying to say. It's kind of a puzzle in some way, so don't throw these away. You may need them. Set them off to the side. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disassemble our new shaft. Should be fun because 
we put so many safety features on shafts now that it's virtually impossible to easily work on these things. That's a lot beefier shaft. See that right up front. Let's see. Shaft off here. Got a little. That's that little ring there. We, we put a little grease back there. So now what we're going to do is take this end off and swap them out. Basically, we're going to reverse the process that we did before. I'll take the rings. There we go. Yeah, we'll be painted, glued it in. Now, now for the egg one. Hopefully, that was the hard one. Probably shouldn't have said that out loud. An ideal, but that's what we got. That's what you're gonna run into. Never gonna be perfect. All right, we got it out. It's a little bit bent, but we can straighten that back out too. Wow, that one was harder than than the old one, but that could be the case of the old one's been vibrated so much. That one has so much paint on it. This one has a lot of paint on it, doesn't it? All right, so again, we're going to do the same. We're going to reverse the same procedure. I'm going to whack it somewhere out. Yep, beat the snot out of it. Sometimes you'll have to check this this uh, grease fitting out, too, just, just so you know, because the, on some of the really small universal joints, the grease fitting can actually get in the way of the travel. So just remember that. You may, you may need to remove the grease fitting in advance. This is the new one, so we're we'll gonna be very careful to keep it clean. And again, we're gonna rotate right back around. And be very gentle. How can you be gentle if you're gonna whack on it? I'm just gonna tap it. I'm not gonna hit it. Oh. It's all about shear pressure and um, pounds per square inch. Gonna get this line back up really well too. Hey Gizmo, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Try my best not to damage this this end because this is <clears> part. <throat> if you if you mar this end at all, then the the needle bearings will uh, wear out very fast. Get another one. Yeah, get another one. This would be much better to do on a press and also with brass drifts and all the nice the right tools. But if you're on the side of the road, this will do in a pinch. Oh no, I didn't do it. I did do that in the what? I took out the wrong one. What did you mean? You took the wrong one. You got the wrong end. The wrong side. I should have took these two out, not the other ones. Oh well. Huh? I should have took these out. Oh. And not these. Okay. Well, I'm well practiced now, anyway. You sure you didn't do that on purpose? Yeah, I'm pretty sure <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose. Because that's something I want to do. Not something I want to do again. So you're going to put the other ones back on first? No, no not really. So what I did, this kind of also helped people too because this is how you would actually change the universal joint all the way out. So since we, I made the mistake, you know, we'll, we'll let everybody else see. See it from scratch.
Right, so what we're doing here, got this last little piece. Being difficult. Again, I'm just tapping this thing, not trying to beat, beat it to death. More taps are better. If it takes more taps, then do more taps, but don't, don't just start hitting it really hard because it will definitely mar the metal, damage the, the bearing surfaces. I think it went through. There's our universal joint. What you want to do now is take your clean rag and inspect each one of these bearing surfaces to make sure we didn't nick them. Because if you did, this would be the time you could take a file and file them down and make them last a lot longer. Looking at all these, make sure that. I'm happy. I don't see any damage anywhere. Just like I said, tapping it, tapping it, tapping it. Get all the paint off of it. All right, I believe we're ready to put this thing back together now. And this is what you would have to do if you were replacing a whole entire universal joint. So my mistake earlier is going to, I guess, be of some use. I'm gonna take... I thought you were going to use this other one. No, this one. Mm -hmm. This one? Yep. So why are you putting that one back in there? Because I didn't need to take this off. Oh. I, I, I actually took the wrong joint off. So you're putting it back on there first so you can put it on this one? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what you're going to do is just stick this universal joint up. This is a little trick you need to do is push the universal joint up. Put the bearing on the actual bearing mate surface before you start tapping this back through. Because otherwise, you'll knock the needle bearings out of your that one in rotate it over take this we'll do our best to not not bear bearings are bored there it went we're gonna knock this one down past the clip ring mark let's keep that in mind and let's rotate that around too. You want the grease fitting to be in between the two joints. All right, so I knock it down past the clip ring mark. So if you'll see the little clip ring in there, C-clip, there's a little groove cut in there for that to set in. That's how you can show that to you. You wanna knock that down past that so that you can take your pliers. And this is the point where things get hairy because the um, these things tend to spring off and fly places, so this would be the time you want to keep use both hands. All right, just slip right in. You can take your little screwdriver and go around, and pull in, clip ring into the groove, so you know that you got a good, a good seat. Because, like I said, there's some paint, other things going on there. All right, so now what we'll do is we're going to go around and to the other side. And we're going to seat that by pushing all the way through. Should have some pressure. Should, yep, it's nice and tight. It'll work its way out over time. You don't want to beat on it. Just all right. That clipped in. Again, we're going to take our screwdriver here go around just pulling in making sure that it's actually sitting in that clip and now I'm just going to come back around take my little punch here which is my, not, not a punch I'll probably ruin this but that'd be okay it's cheap hit it maybe one or two times and you'll feel your universal joint loosen up just a little bit all right so that's that now we're going to move to putting the new one on or the old one back on and the same process in reverse so you're going to use the new ones yeah they're the same 
Most tractors and reverse joints are the same, so. Trying to hold all this together. This is a whole lot less fun with screwdrivers and pliers, but it can be done. I promise you. If you're in the if you're in the middle of the desert and this is all you've got to work with is a pair of screwdrivers, um, you'll get it, you'll figure it out. Because it's hot and you want to get it done. Functioning university. We'll go ahead and get the grease gun and put some grease on it. This is the time to do it. Also, some of the Universal joints you'll get nowadays, they'll come with uh, basically sealed universal joints. There won't be a grease fitting in them. A lot of them that way nowadays. And you just got to be real careful to keep the grease in there that come, comes with a joint and not get dirt in there. There it went. Don't need a ton of pressure on it. All right, so we've got the universal joint replaced, and now we're going to cut the shaft. I'm not going to make you guys watch me put cutting the shaft. We we have a really easy job right here because we are cutting it, uh, just matching up the two shaft lengths, so it's not hard. If you've never done that before, I'll leave a link at the end of this video to actually how to cut a PTO shaft for a new implement. So it's no sense in uh, this is not really going to teach you anything. So. Listen guys, I appreciate you watching our channel and I hope this was helpful to you. God bless, have a great day.